I wanted to give you a moment to look at that, pause on it if you so wish, and then explain. So, the systematic single syllable singables, or four S's, or super solfage, as my friend Thorin recommended it be called, um, is a solfage system that I hope um, is, if not more intuitive, at least a little easier to use or more helpful. Not, I won't say more, but uh, it builds on the traditional solfage system and tries, and my attempt was to encode more information per syllable and again also make it more intuitive, hopefully. So, uh, what is a solfage system? So, most people are at least familiar vaguely with what solfege is, even if they don't know it by name, but thanks to The Sound of Music, which is probably the greatest thing any musical has ever done for uh, musical understanding. But, uh, solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Basically, the notes of the major scale, um, you map a syllable, a single syllable, to each step of the scale. Um, so do is the tonic, one, re is the second note of the scale, two, mi, and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to know more about solfege, you can read all about that. There's multiple kinds. There's fixed solfege where uh, do is always on some set note, and then there's movable do where do can move around, and then there's scale modes and all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, so solfege is nice, and it's helpful for, uh, for singers and even for uh, musicians to sort of conceptualize and internalize the notes of the scale. Um, the breakdown for me, it's, it's not that solfege in itself isn't a good enough system, but um, when I'm trying, like, so I'm, I've been playing guitar for a long time and I've never had, like, the, the sort of intuition for if I'm here, on, like, if I just pick some spot on the fretboard, what is that? Um, you, like, what note is that? Um, I, I have to sort of work it out. Okay, well, you know, this is the B string, and I know that's E, so F, F sharp, that's F sharp. Um, it doesn't take long, um, and depending on where I am on the fretboard, I might have a better, like, I'm much better down here than I am up here, usually. Um, but also, like, so for the purposes of playing through scales, like, let's do E major, um, well, I guess what I will, what I'll, uh, caveat it with is that, um, I'm not like the best at playing scales and coming up with the system was part of helping me learn that because like when I play through scales, I'm trying to think in my head, okay, E, F, F sharp, uh, F sharp, G, um, yeah, uh, G sharp actually. So E, F, F sharp, F sharp, G, what am I missing? E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, sorry. I kept landing on G here and I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, so E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Um, so if you know the, the order of the notes in the scale, you can sort of in your head be like, okay, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, uh, you know, and work your way through the scale. Okay, E, e, e sharp, uh, bleh, E major has four sharps, so I know Frank can go down. I have F, C, G, D, and you can work all that out in your head. And if you're, if you've done it a lot and you do it, you know, more than just as a hobby, you you can probably do it pretty quickly. I'm I'm not really sure because I've never been at that level, like how the mental process works for somebody who's like really good at it. But I know that like when I have been practicing my scales and trying to iterate over scales, like I am, um, I, I want to be able to sing along and be like, okay, E, e F sharp, G sharp, A, B, but it's like clumsy because like you're you're trying to cram in that F sharp, G sharp, B, like or A, like you're trying to say these things which sometimes are multiple syllables um, and you may not, depending on how fast you're playing, what you're playing, like it's very difficult uh, to cram all that in. That's part of where the solfege system helps. Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Um, but what both solfege and even what I was saying a minute ago, E, E, F sharp, G, like neither of those are a complete encoding of what I'm playing. Um, because if I just say E, there's nothing that tells you that this is E2. If I say Do, there's nothing that even tells you this is E. So like, 
when I'm trying to play through and internalize and learn what these notes are, um, I it became apparent that I needed some kind of system, um, some something that I could do to iterate through them and sing a single syllable at a time and also be uh, noting, internalizing, and building into my like muscle memory and just passive ability to do stuff the the fundamental nature of every note that I'm playing here. So that's what the uh, systematic single syllable singables is intended to do. So in the case of this, we have E2. Oh man, that's so far away. Uh, what is that? Uh, le... And I will say, by the way, I came up with the system uh, earlier this year. I haven't, like, grokked it, like, fully br uh, burnt it into my brain yet. I'm working on it. But I figured I'd throw the idea out there because I know there's lots of smart people out here who will p hopefully take the idea and run with it and make it better. Um, but so, E, if uh, I will go ahead and come over to the graph here real quick, the chart. Um, okay, so I don't know if you'll be able to see, you can't see my cursor, but you should be able to see if I do like this, for example. Yes. Okay. Um, so E, uh, the, for, for the uh, left to right, what we have is A, E, U, E, O. This is inspired directly from Japanese, where you have five basic vowels, A, E, U, E, and O, and they come in that order. So we have, and uh, this doesn't say it, but these are the octaves here, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so octave zero, we use the A uh, vowel, and octave one, we use the E vowel, A, E, U, E, O, so on and so forth. And then I added the uh, Ya, uh, sort of a little diphthongy thing for octaves above that. Um, there's probably better ways to do that. Um, and I, th I think diphthongs technically are two syllables, or they're, they're at least a melding of syllables. So it, it, you can sort of get back into that issue of, um, trying to cram multiple sounds into one syllable. But there's plenty of other vowel sounds that aren't just a, e, u, a, and o. Like, so you smart people out there could potentially look at that and be like, oh, actually you could use, you know, a uh and i, uh, you know, some of the other um, vocalizations that aren't part of the Japanese character set, for example. Um, so yeah, we have a, e, u, a, and o for octave zero to five. The, um, there, you can go up to, you know, octave eight or however far you want to go. Um, and I just got these here because it's, you know, a simple demonstration of the concept. Um, and then so for the E line, uh, what the Japanese might call the ekyo, uh, the, we have the L um, uh, consonant. So basically, much like uh, the hiragana or katakana syllabary in Japanese, we have a consonant and a vowel for every combo. So the consonant will tell you what the note is, the vowel will tell you what the octave is. So la, li, lu, le, lo, that's E0, E1, and y you're probably getting it at this point, but yeah, so I just, to demonstrate, yeah. So now if we go down here, this is presently tuned to E2, which means that that is uh, lu. Lu. Um, and then if we go up to F sharp, so now we are down here. We have F sharp, which the uh, consonant now is V, um, and we're in octave two, so it's going to be U. So, Lu, V, and then Chu, Hu, Lu, Chu. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gotta figure it out. Yeah, so basically what you can do, and what I have been doing, um, is sort of trying to go through and um, sing along, internalize, um, and sort of what I have noticed is while doing this, um, like I'll remember, and you don't have to just do scales with this. Like you can do songs with this. So like I was working on... Um, uh, a song that like I had uh, written it for my uh, nephew's birthday and uh, which was a couple months ago and like I, I had not played it a lot since uh, I last sent him the message so yesterday or the day before I was working on it trying to figure out what it was against like I know I know it starts on B so that's uh, B3 which is uh, what B something like that yeah B um, so then I'm like, be, be, zo, be, zo, be, 
And so like I was trying to work to, like without using the solfege system, you can be like, okay, well that's B3, uh, C3, uh, no, it resets at C. So that's uh, C4, that's why it becomes Zo instead of Be. Um, but and you're sort of like what I was noticing while I was doing this is that uh, on one of the later uh, parts of the melody like that the uh, the syllables like we're sticking with me even more than like uh, the the note like the the more um, rigorous or like uh, pedagogical um, name for the thing, which is good because that's what you want to happen. Like, uh, once you've lost track, you're like, oh, I forget what I am, but I know it's Like, you can, you can at least, uh, come back to what you know, and then I'm internalizing also that, oh, that's Joe. So, um, downsides. There, there's definitely some downsides here, like the, um, the ah, being on the the what I mean by that is the uh, the ah uh, vowel being on the zero the zeroth octave not ideal because that's a pretty common pretty handy vowel and the zeroth octave is not something a whole lot of people can sing so you could uh, potentially move that maybe maybe you would want uh, octave three to be ah because I want to you know save the ah syllable for you know what I can sing or whatever and you might come you might put something like cha down in octave zero or you know chu like uh, ch chu or whatever like however you want to make it clear that it's distinct from just uh, chu cha chu or like I was saying earlier you could use cha chi like whatever is different for you enough that you can you can tell and uh, I identify and internalize okay that's you know octave negative one or that's octave seven um, yeah there's always all kinds of ways you can rearrange this and use it to be more uh, to your liking um, but yeah so uh, th that's the basic concept but what I wanted to also explain so like let's go through the notes for a second real quick um, I've tried to make it somewhat intuitive so that we have C is the S sound so C SA uh, and then for C sharp um, it's like s, s, but it's it's flattened. It's z. so this is again sort of borrowing from Japanese, where like it, with the sa character, if you put uh, what they call dakuten on it, then uh, it goes from sa to being za. Um, so in this case, we have c sa c, uh, and then we put the sharp sign on it, and it becomes za z. Like basically, it, it's very similar to how that works in Japanese. D is the the da. So da di do te do, uh, and then d flat and d is j. So it's that's kind of clumsy. We, there might be a better thing you could come up with for that. Uh, e is l, so like or e I should say is is the l sound. And for like for me, that's just sort of associating with like l and le. Like often e in many languages has this association with an l. So like uh, sort of is in, intuitive in my brain. F or f is the the. F, row um so then uh sharp f is v which is like f, f, f. um then g we have ga uh or ga kiku ke go um and then uh g sharp i put as ch cha chi chu che cho if that doesn't work for you maybe you come up something you could do like uh, uh whatever is available you could do k uh you know you could you could swap something in if you want um a we have ha hi hu he ho, and uh, now in my mind, you could even make the a the the h sound silent, or you know sometimes make it silent, sometimes not make it silent, so that your your a row is could even just be a i u a and o, or you could sort of inflect ha uh, he like the there are ways like uh, hu in Japanese isn't quite like a hu sound, it's like a f, um, but yeah, how, however you have whatever makes sense to you, but like for a like A in, uh, or rather H in a lot of languages is um, silent. Uh, in certain contexts, some in most contexts. So like um, the pairing that with A, so that like A, which is itself a vowel and your first uh, 
you know, syllable here is ha. If you want to make that ah, it sort of just mentally reinforces oh, ha, ah, we're talking about a, you know, uh, and then a sharp pi. Uh, well, so this are, uh, also borrows from Japanese, where if you put the uh, little circle, the maru, on uh, an H character, it becomes a, a p character. This could also be ba, but then we have ba here. Uh, in, in Japanese, when you put the uh, dakuten, it becomes ba. But since we have a b, I reserve that for this. Um, so, like, basically we have B consonant on the, the B sounds. Uh, you know, I've gone through it all, so you get the idea. Um, there's lots to refine about this. Um, I'm not, like, great at using it yet, but I have been practicing with it. I've got some songs that I've sort of basically written with it and um, sort of... In my mind, like for any of my songs, I could come up with solfege versions of them, and I've, I've started working on that to some degree, where basically to help me, because like for a lot of my songs, um, I, I came up with them months or even years ago, and like I don't remember what the key is and like what the melody is in terms of like what notes are in the melody. So as now, which I'm doing these days, I'm going back through, relearning, coming up with ways to play and sing along with them. It's very helpful for me to be able to then uh, insert these syllables and be like, okay, well now I know, you know, this song, like I was saying earlier with the birthday thing, I knew, I knew it was a B, so we have B, and then it's like B. Oh, okay, so B, uh, C sharp, you know, Joe, Joe, you know, that's uh, D sharp. Um, so, like, in my head, I'm already getting this stuff internalized, and it's helpful. I hope it's helpful to some of you, and I also hope that uh, some very smart people out there of you will see this, run with it, and make it so much better than I have made it so far. That would, nothing would make me happier. And I will say before I'm done, I know uh, from extensive study of microtonality in the past year that there's also a system called uniform solfege, which attempts to sort of generalize the solfege system to uh, basically any tuning. And I, I have not fully um, internalized and like understood that system yet. Um, I get the sense it's much more powerful than this, but probably less intuitive to somebody who's still learning. So this could be like a bridge from standard solfege to uniform solfege. Who knows? Um, if it's useful to you, use it. If it's not useful to you, then discard it and move on with your life. But I, I figured I'd throw it out there now as opposed to just holding on to it and see what happens. If nothing, well, then I'll continue to use it. But that's it for now. Um, I will switch it back to this uh, chart. So if you want to pause it and work on it yourself or whatever, feel free. Um, and then I will end the video. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.